And so I, uh, I uh, was sort of raised uh, in the Puerto Rican community at home politically. And so we, and we came here for a long time, uh, both for business and pleasure, since you're part of the Third Circuit Court. Where do you stand behind Lee County's decision to not have that mandatory evacuation until the day before the storm? Well, did you, where was your industry stationed uh, when the storm hit? Were you guys in Lee County? No, you were in Tampa. So that's, you know, they were following the weather track and um, they had to make decisions based on that. But, you know, 72 hours, they weren't even in the cone. 48 hours, they were on the periphery. Uh, so you got to make the decisions the best you can. I will say, uh, you know, they delivered the message to people. They had shelters open. Uh, you know, everybody had adequate opportunity to at least get to a shelter within the county. Um, but, you know, a lot of the residents did not, um, not want to do that. I think for probably for various reasons, some people just don't want to leave their home, period. They're island people, whatever. But I think part of it was so much attention was paid to Tampa that I think a lot of them probably thought that they wouldn't get the worst of it. So, you know, they um, but they did. And, and I think it's um, it's easy to second guess them. But they were ready for the whole time and, um, and and made that call when when there was justifiable to do so. Some of their neighboring counties, though, did have mandatory evacuations before Tuesday. Well, right. But our neighboring. I mean, if you look at like. Um, Tuesday morning, they had moved the track down. Models started showing it going to like Sarasota, you know. So that's that. So so they did that. I was in Sarasota that day with them when they were expanding some of their evacuations. You know, Charlotte, I think, did the same thing either Monday night or Tuesday morning. Um, so you know, but don't forget Sunday, uh, 11 a.m. advisory. It was going to go to Taylor County in North Florida. And so you know, at, the, at some point, you got to look to see kind of where this thing is going. So yeah, no, I mean, I think it. I, I think that it's um, it's easy to say in hindsight. You know, we had most of our supply station in the Tampa Bay area. As that track moved, we, we shifted our response further south as well. Now, we said there would be impacts for sure. And even when it was going to hit North Florida, it's such a big storm, there was going to be impacts in south, southwest Florida as well. But the difference between impacts and having the, the, the eye go there is much different. And for most of Sunday, Monday, and even in the Tuesday, it was 100, 150 miles away from that. That shit about the Santas, but that gas is here in Arcadia. In, in Arcadia. Now, I don't know why the rest of y'all, but it's here in Arcadia. So y'all know who we vote for. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why the rest of you motherfuckers, but I'm voting for the Santas. And I'm a Democrat. So y'all can call it what the fuck y'all want to call it. We got children now. Okay, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm sorry. All right, what's up, man? Okay, Norm, you're Canadian. Yes, I am. So what do you think of this whole presidential mess? Uh, well, I, I hope that uh, uh, the Democrats don't steal the election from the, uh, the winner, you know, but mm -hmm. who knows? Oh. <laughs> you like George Bush, don't you? I love George Bush, man. He's a good man, decent, you know, none of this. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, you know, he's not a... Uh, a uh, lie or a crook murder or anything like that. So it'd be good to get the. See, I, I don't. I think we should get the homicide out of the White House and get like a a, a fresh start because we don't want any more murderers. I no, think we, we should just go on to the next question. Oh. <laughs> murderers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Clinton, he murdered a guy. Yeah, you know we're not allowed. <laughs> no, to, you're not no, allowed um, to put out no, um, accusations with that. That's a little Charlie. too that's far. The way it does let's work. just let's just go on to the next question. <laughs> <part. laughs> yeah. This is not my week. What can I tell you? <laughs> Oh, it's not mine either, and I'm being very nice, okay? <laughs> Be a good boy. Now, Norm. Do you never hear that? No. Listen, Norm, we don't need I to don't talk get about into this. And I don't want to hear it, and this is not the place to make those accusations. And you're supposed to be funny. Oh. Let's get on there. Exactly. So get with it. There you go. <laughs> this is a live show. Not Why? Norm, but you have been properly chastised by Barbara. Oh. So I'm not going to ask the next Question. I thought it was a matter of record. Shut no. up! Uh, no. Shut up! Look, okay. let me do this, okay? okay. <laughs> I'll tell you what's a matter of record. You will not be invited back if you don't shut up. Uh, All right, uh, now. <laughs> Let's talk football. All right, man, manslaughter. Let's talk football. <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm, did you ever hear the word? Oh, oh, I, the oh phone is ringing. I certainly then. hope that's somebody calling Please. to tell you to go home. Oh, no. Would you got a phone ringing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, answer the phone. Hello? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, no. Uh, the thing is this.
Well, this is not a video I want to make, um, and it's kind of hard to make because as I'm watching myself, I see um, what I'm going to say, which is I have been diagnosed with Bell's palsy, which is paralysis on one side of the face. For me, it's uh, this side here, the, the left, obviously. Um, so I got it about two weeks after getting my vaccine and I had a rough go with the vaccine um, and I guess still am, but I have to say that I would do it again because it's what we have to do to see people. So um, I don't know why I'm making this video, but here's my word smile. Most Americans, by the way, now sadly in this transition, they suffered during the COVID pandemic. But there's one person that did not. Tony Fauci. According to the nonprofit Open the Books, the net worth of Tony Fauci and his wife increased by more than $5 million during the pandemic. A lot of that money came from a foreign nonprofit. This raises a lot of questions about potential conflicts of interest. In June, Tony Fauci declined to answer questions under oath about those potential conflicts. Can you tell me that you have not received a royalty from any entity that you ever oversaw the distribution of money in research grants? Um, well, first of all, let's talk about royalty. That's the question. No, that's the question. Have you oh, ever no, overseen, Senator, have you ever received a royalty playing. payment from a company that you later oversaw money going to that company? You know, I don't know as a fact, but I doubt it. That's a big thing to speculate about. You might want to know. Chadwick Moore is with The Spectator USA, and he's the author of the new book. So you've been sent to diversity training, smiling through the DEI apocalypse, and he joins us now. Chadwick, great to see you. Great to have you this evening. So, you know, most people didn't fare too well through the pandemic. Isn't it odd that the man in charge of the pandemic prospered? Yeah, right? I mean, step aside Nancy Pelosi. We have a new uh, super honest, definitely not corrupt king of Wall Street, and it's Anthony Fauci. I don't know if you recall back in uh, May, about May 2021, so right in the middle of the pandemic, this elfin puppy-killing little psychopath was going to release a book uh, profiting me openly on the pandemic at that time, and even the most staunch branch covidians at the time were like mm, that's not a good look you shouldn't be profiting off the uh, pandemic in this way uh well you know didn't bother him too much apparently he had all these side gig going on and uh that's pocketed him five million dollars it's absolutely insane uh you know it would be nice if we would get some answers i think that people like Rand paul have some very good uh intentions um but i'm not convinced that we'll ever know the extent to which people like anthony fauci gamed the system for their own advantage during COVID and destroyed countless lives in the process. It's really uh, heartbreaking and sad. Uh, and uh, we still don't have answers. He won't answer the question about what kind of royalties people like him are getting from pharmaceutical companies for this uh, vaccine they're still pushing. Game the system. That's exactly, that's the point of this conversation. You know, it's worth noting, it's always worth remembering that he's the highest paid federal government employee more than the president of the United States, I believe, in terms of annual salary. But what did he know? What did he know ahead of time? What did he know in order to profit in whatever way he might have that he clearly did, as you point out, to the tune of $5 million? Why? It's, it's more than worthy of investigation. It's worthy of skeptical, eyebrow-raising questions. Exactly. And why is it legal for a man in that position to take money from foreign nonprofits? Why is that legal? Uh, has anyone asked that question? It seems absolutely insane. But these are the people that the left parade around like heroes. I mean, he was dancing on the covers of magazines like a little starlet in the middle of the pandemic. And they still refuse to acknowledge this. You know, if the left had their own Mount Rushmore, they'd put him up there next to St. Floyd and Lizzo's big behind. They love this man. They refuse to pretend that there's anything nefarious that could be going on when everything is all stinks. And it's really sad. It's really heartbreaking. Yeah, he's on the list of things thou shall not question. You know, uh, thou shall not question DEI right. training or you are a racist. <laughs> thou shall not question marching towards nuclear war or you're a Putin apologist. Thou shall not question Fauci or you're a science denier. Chadwick, I'm sorry, you probably <laughs> violated at least two of those three, those <laughs> two or three commandments commandments in one segment. I know. <laughs> Chadwick Moore, great to talk to you. Thank you. 
Thank you. My pleasure. There's some just raided the home of a pro-life community leader, arrested him in front of his wife and seven children with guns drawn for nothing, for a non-crime, a misdemeanor. We didn't used to have FBI raids on the basis of alleged misdemeanors in this country. Now we do if you vote the wrong way. But at the same time, the FBI is all but ignoring violence committed against people who don't vote for Joe Biden. In June, criminals firebombed a pro-life pregnancy center in Buffalo, a place called Compass, Compass Care Pregnancy Services. The people who did this, the bombers, have not been caught. Why? Because the FBI has not even bothered to investigate. A firebombing. Now, local police and the feds took surveillance footage from the center, but they didn't do anything with it. But they didn't give it back to the center. The center is suing to get it back. Then the attorney for the local police told the crisis pregnancy center they can't have their own tapes back because those tapes might inspire right-wing violence. Are you following the logic here? It's completely insane. It's utterly politicized law enforcement. It's the deepest level of corruption. It's totally unacceptable. You can't have a country run like this. The Reverend James Harden is the president and CEO of Compass Care Pregnancy Services, and we're grateful he's joining us tonight. Reverend Harden, thanks so much for thanks. joining us. Um, it, it's hard. To, this is one of those stories you sum up the facts, and it's hard to believe they're real. Did we sum that up correctly? Is that actually what's happened? I know it sounds dystopian, but that's exactly what's happening. Yes. I mean, we're facing essentially a moral hurricane in our country. The FBI has gone from abdicating uh, their duty to, to provide equal justice under the law to pro-life people like us to go downright attacking us. And that was our concern when we filed suit against the Amherst Police Department taking charge of the, of the investigation to get our, ta our video back so we can start to prosecute whoever the perpetrators are. We, we came out and I, I was concerned that uh, they, would, they would engage character assassination. That is the FBI. That would be their next step. Set over 70 attacks on pro-life organizations across the country, zero arrests. I mean, look, it's naive to think that the largest law enforcement agency on the globe with the best forensic technology known to man doesn't know in, not a single person who's engaging in these attacks. If it's not the FBI doing it, they certainly know who is, and they're choosing not to make arrests. And we need, we, we need equal protection under the law. Look, Jane's Revenge is the abortion terrorist group, the pro-abortion terrorist group that's taking responsibility for these attacks, and they're getting a pass, a pass. It's, and I'd say, look, Jane's Revenge is the Democratic Party's new KKK, and the new cross in the front, front yard is burning down pregnancy centers. But instead of denigrating the personhood of black people, they're denigrating the personhood of preborn boys and girls and anybody that seeks to stand up for them. Well, you can't allow fire bombings in your country, period. I mean, the, the Congress has shut the FBI down over the. And really quick, were you really told that you could not have your own surveillance tapes back because those tapes of a fire bombing of your property might inspire right wing terrorism? I mean, that doesn't seem real. Yes. Oh, yes. We're, we're, we're in the process of, of suing. I mean, there's litigation, there's active litigation happening right now uh, to get our, our, our video back. And so we can even so we can just see it. In fact, the town attorney representing the police department went so far as to say uh, to characterize pro-life people supporting us as AK-47 gun toting people going around bombing and killing people. They're vilifying us. Man, I, I grew up in this country. I'm trying not to be hysterical or alarmist. You, you don't want to make something sound worse than it is. But the facts alone in this story are really stunning to the conscience. They, re they really are. The Reverend James Harden joining us tonight. Thank you. The Eagles are so much better than the Eagles. At first, I just wanted to check in and see how how you're feeling and how you're doing. I'm doing fa I'm doing fantastic, and and uh, it's not about uh, kicking balls uh, in the authority or anything. And make sure you take advantage of this amazing opportunity to the only thing you have stand to lose is your record. What? is wrong with demanding for an easy, safe kind of their income, a path to a safe place for them to win. And I can champion the union way of life in Jersey, in, excuse me, in DC. If you come out and step with us, we will be able to stand with you in D.C. Girls volleyball team has been booted from their own locker room after complaining about a transgender student, also known as a boy, being allowed to use it. 
And if that weren't shocking enough, the school now says they're investigating allegations that the girls harassed the trans student by voicing their issues. And all of this is being pushed by the same people who claim to care about women. Until, of course, a more marginalized and politically convenient man comes along. How about them bus tires, ladies? Randolph High School in Randolph, Vermont, has temporarily barred its entire girls' volleyball team from using the school's female locker room after some of the girls complained about a teammate, who's a biological male, being allowed in the space where they change and shower. High school student Blake Ellen and her teammates are currently barred from using the locker room after some of the girls on the team objected to allowing a transgender player in the girls' locker room. The girls who complained said that it all started when the male student made an inappropriate comment leaving some of them feeling uncomfortable with his being in the same locker room. Allen says the dispute started when the trans student made an inappropriate comment while members of the volleyball team were getting changed. She says her issue is not with having the trans student on the team or at school, but specifically in the locker room. When the students and their parents approached the school with their concerns, school officials reportedly told them that Vermont law says students can play sports and use bathrooms and locker rooms that correspond with their gender identity. And apparently anyone who doesn't like it is just crap out of luck. Yep, the Vermont Agency of Education policy states that a transgender student should not be required to use a locker room or restroom that conflicts with the student's gender identity. Instead, the state requires female students to use a locker room or restroom that, you know, conflicts with their not wanting to shower and get dressed in front of a guy. And if that weren't insulting enough, the school then wrote an email to students saying that there's plenty of space where students who feel uncomfortable with the laws may change in privacy. In an email to family, school officials said that the school has plenty of space where students who feel uncomfortable with the laws may change in privacy. Which some girls say is logistically impossible because that means all the other girls would be forced to take turns showering and changing in the one standalone stall that's available, also that the dude can have free reign of the communal space. Now for clarity, let's just make one thing perfectly clear. There's no such thing as a transgender person, only people who think they are. Your gender is the one you were born with. You cannot transition to the other. It's a biological impossibility. That's not my opinion. It's DNA. You can be pissed about it, but that's like being mad at the sun for shining. You can't stop it. But instead of protecting its female students from having to get naked and shower in front of boys, this school which I assume teaches biology somewhere in the building, is now investigating the girls for being uncomfortable enough with the arrangement to say something about it. And all of this insanity is being pushed by the same group of people who claim to be all about women's rights and smashing the patriarchy. Women are a protected class of victims when it comes to the legal right to kill a child in the womb. We're sacred and unquestionable whenever a woman runs for political office against a man or when we accuse a dude of sexual harassment. Believe all women, full stop. Every equal payday, we have to hear liberals squawking about the oppression of female employees and how our jobs and our raises and our promotions are being usurped by toxic men. What wonderful props we make when it's convenient. But when it comes to protecting young girls against being forced to share changing spaces and shower stalls with boys who simply claim they're girls, suddenly women are acceptable sacrifices on the altar of wokeness. Sit down and shut up, ladies. This mentally confused guy here says he's a chick, and you have to accept that. Hand over your trophies and your scholarships. Let him violate your personal space, and you're a bigot if you complain. But hey, if you're ever whistled at by a frat boy, let us know. We'll put you on a billboard. If you can't defend young girls' right to get dressed in a locker room at school without having to share that space with a boy, you are no champion of women. You're either a science-denying idiot, or you understand the truth perfectly well and you've decided that politics are more important. And that just makes you a coward. And that's your Reality Check America. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube and Rumble pages, like us on Facebook and Twitter, and stay sane out there. Tell me, abortion is effectively banned in the state right now. Tell me, do you, is that something that you support? I support saving as many lives as possible. And what I really want to know, and I've been waiting, I tune into you guys all the time. I want to know where Katie Hobbs stands, but ne- I never hear you guys ask for that. I'm pro-life. My plan would be that every woman who walks into an abortion clinic know that there are options out there. They don't have to choose that. There's families who would love to adopt a baby. And right now, the way it's been going, 
They go in and they, they only have one option. That's it. Nobody tells them that there's other options. We want to help our women. If they're afraid, we want to help them. We want to give women health care, and I want to help people. But I really challenge you, and I'm, I'm happy to get back to you on this, when you find out where Katie Hobbs stands, because let me tell you where she stands. She supports abortion right up until birth Thank and after you. birth. That's right. She supports if a baby survives a botched abortion, that that baby die on a cold metal tray. True. And none of you ever try to get her to talk about her stance. So get back to me after you do. Thank and you. tell her. I want to debate this topic on October 12th, but she really needs to show up for that debate. Yes. 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 First, it's important to make clear that uh, these pipelines, that is Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2, uh, were not uh, pumping gas into Europe uh, at this time. Nord Stream 2 never became operational, mm -hmm. as is well known. Nord Stream 1 has been shut down for weeks uh, because of Russia's weaponization of energy. What we've been doing, and we've also been working on this together uh, for many, many weeks, uh, as we saw the Russian aggression in Ukraine and as we saw the uh, ongoing weaponization of energy by Russia, is to work very closely with uh, European partners as well as countries around the world to make sure that there is enough energy uh, on world markets. And so we've significantly increased our um, production as well as um, making available to Europe liquefied natural gas. Um, and we're now the leading supplier of LNG uh, to Europe to help compensate for any uh, gas or oil that it's losing as a result of Russia's aggression against Ukraine. Black roses, black roses. 